Well, this video was bound to happen, wasn't it? After releasing my review of the first Cat Quest to moderate success... Jesus Christ, what? I knew that I would have to share my thoughts on the sequel just in time for Cat Quest 3's release. So excited! And after diving into the game and pouring quite a few hours into it, I have a lot to say. Does this game fix a lot of the first game's repetition? Does it have a better storyline? Does Cat Trap completely break this game too? Has Kit Kat stopped charging you ridiculous prices for loot boxes? Is the game better than the first? Well, we'll be answering all those questions later, but just as a summary... Yes. Cat Quest 2 is a massive improvement over the first game, and tackles a lot of the criticisms I had with it. The core gameplay loop from the first game makes a return and has been completely untouched. You attack the enemies with your weapon, you dodge out of the way before the enemy hits you, and you have a plethora of magical spells to use. If it ain't broke. However, the developers have added a few new things for you to use. I mean, they gotta justify that too in the title somehow. The best new feature that they've added is the bigger assortment of weapons. A big criticism from the first game I've seen online is that the combat felt repetitive after a while, and yeah, I can see why they think that. For the sequel, they still do have the first game's melee weapons, but have also thrown in heavy weapons and magic staffs. Heavy weapons are exactly what they sound like. Big, beefy saws and axes that inflict more damage. However, their animations are slower and it can sometimes leave you a bit vulnerable if you don't time it right. The staffs, however, are where it's at. Instead of getting up close and personal, you can instead pick off enemies from afar by shooting out... Uh, balls at them. What are you f***ing gay? These come in all unique shapes and sizes with different effects like fire and ice damage. However, there's a catch. Your health is significantly reduced if you use these, and you can go down in about three hits. It's a challenge and will involve you rolling quite a lot, but if you got the confidence and skill, I would 100% recommend using these. They become absolutely devastating when you upgrade them, and can lead to you decimating the enemies with ease. Hang on, did, did, I, did I read that right? Let me just go back for a second. Hang on, let me just reread this again. Okay, they become absolutely devastating when you upgrade them. You can... You can upgrade your weapons and armor? You can upgrade them now? <laughs> yes, you heard that right. No longer do you have to fork over 5,000 gold to c cat and test your luck with the dumbass luck of the draw. You can just upgrade them however you like. I mean, you still have to find the weapons in chests and you can't really buy them anyway, but, but design oversight. Okay, we can upgrade them now. Oh, what a day. What a lovely day. <clears throat> Uh, anyways, uh, the developers also expand on some of the features in the last game too. For example, there are a lot more abilities this time. Water walking makes a return, as it's quite relevant to the story once again, but you've also got combat abilities as well. You can roll into enemies, giving them a little bit of damage, or if you roll and then press attack, you can hit enemies with a quick flurry of hits. That last one especially is the most helpful ability in the game, especially when you've got a magical staff equipped and I found myself using it almost every chance that I could. Then we have the magic spells. There are a total of 12 magical spells, with a few returning favourites such as the fire, ice and lightning abilities, but there are also new ones like Gravaruff, Furry Shield, and my personal favourite, Force Woofer. Each one of the magical spells are different with their own pros and cons. For example, some of the elemental spells won't work on enemies that share the same powers, and you have to switch up your attacks to damage them. It offers room for some strategy, which I appreciate. And yes, Cat Trap is still here. For those out of the loop, in my review of the first Cat Quest, I said that Cat Trap completely broke the game after you unlocked it. All you had to do was bait the enemies into staying on the spikes, and that's it. Easy peasy. In the sequel, it's the, it's the exact same. Nothing has changed. You still put the spikes down and bait enemies to stay onto it. And you can still use a second power, like for example the Graviruff to pull enemies in, then you put one down on the floor and slowly watch them take damage. It's still fairly broken, but I don't think it breaks the game this time. Unlike the first game where it was an unintentional cheat code, this time it's a helpful tool that can help you turn the tide in battle, and I think that largely has to do with the game's increased difficulty. 
Whilst it's not Soulsborne levels of what? How? Are you kidding me? It feels as if the developers have ramped up the difficulty with this one. Everything from boss fights to higher level monsters feel challenging and can seriously test your skills with the game's mechanics. Or it could just be a skill issue, who knows. I found it to be quite tense, especially with all the shit that the game throws at you sometimes. I mean, it's not exactly kill the Justice League levels of holy shit what the f is happening here, stop it with the fucking pop-ups for a second, but it is pretty crowded. You may be thinking to yourself, why is it harder this time? Well I think it's because of Cat Quest 2's biggest selling point, co-op. That's right, the sequel has two characters to play as, Cat and Dog. Neither are unique from the other, but you can equip each of them with a selection of different armour, weapons and spells. In single player, you can switch to either with a touch of a button at any time, with an AI taking control of the second character. Special shout out to the AI as well, they are unbelievably helpful in combat, never take any damage, and even cast spells for you, albeit randomly. But the fun is easily found with that second person, and can lead to some really funny moments together. I will admit, it's not flawless, you're both required to be near the objective marker to start quests or even enter places, and when one of you goes down the other has to stand in a circle and dodge enemies to revive them, which takes forever. But it's still a lot of fun, even if the person you play with is terrible at video games. But what can you actually do in the game? Well, dungeons and side missions both return, and like the combat, they've received a bit of an overhaul. Let's talk about the dungeons first. You still head into a cave with a difficulty level, take out all the monsters inside, and pillage some chests for new gear. This time though, the dungeons do actually have a goal. You take out all the enemies, and a secret locked chest will open with some extra goodies inside. It is a massive step up from the first cat quest, where dungeons didn't really have an overarching goal, and was just there to give the player something to do. However, that's only one kind of dungeon. The new dungeons introduced will see you take on three waves of enemies with each wave getting harder, and if you survive all three waves, you'll be rewarded with a chest. It's not groundbreaking, but it does enough to offer some variety. And finally, both of these types of dungeons do include traps to spice things up and keep you on your toes. You'll have to either manoeuvre around them or time things right to get past them safely. And if you don't... Then we have the side missions. Around the world, you'll bump into crazy cats and dogs, asking for your help retrieving items, killing enemies, or both. Much like the first game, these characters and their dialogue are what make these missions. You'll encounter some proper weird and wacky inhabitants, such as the return of the meat-obsessed cats, a dog explorer called Barkthan Drake, a cat and dog locked into a staring contest with each other, the developers of the game, a vigilante dog called the Doge Knight, I'll give you three guesses who this is parodying. I'm Batman! And this cat who just wants to play rock, paper, scissors with you. Spoilers, he loses. There is a lot of side content to go through. I found myself looking through the world and sometimes being completely overwhelmed with the amount of stuff you can do here. And speaking of the world, holy shit this map is huge. As you start the game, you'll feel right at home in the land of the cats. It has the same art style, vibes and colour. However, as the sequel has included dogs this time, it's also featured their world, so now we have two areas to explore, making the map more expansive. I do wish, and <laughs> this is a little nitpick here, that I could zoom out when I'm on the map. I wanted to see it in all of its glory, and get a better idea as to what's around me. But at least we can move the map this time, so that's something. And then finally, we have the game's story, which is 110% better than the first games. The villains this time are pretty good. There are two of them called Lioner and Wolfen, big, imposing chads in scary looking armour who actually feel like a genuine threat, unlike the bitter bitch Dracoff from the last game. You'll be encountering both of them periodically throughout the game, and will be put to the test against them with various boss fights some of which you cannot win no matter what you do. There is also a tertiary villain called Alias who was teased at the end of the last game. He doesn't really have a lot of character and could have done with some more scenes fleshing him out to make him on par with Lioner and Wolfen. At least he has a cool design, even with that third eye. Still better than whatever was in Doctor Strange 2. What is that? What the f*** is that? <laughs> Moving on to the good guys, I was pleasantly surprised to see them get some character development too. Kit Kat the Blacksmith returns along with her southern dialect, Spiri is replaced by what I assume is his son called Kiri, and we even meet the governor of Port City again who... 
who the fuck is this? But there are also some new memorable characters like Hotto Doggo, a Japanese inspired dog who always talks about hot dogs. Because he is a dog. And his name is Hotto Doggo. Do you get it? As for plot, the main goal this time involves you travelling from place to place, finding shards of a legendary weapon called the King's Blade so you can use it to defeat the bad guys. As far as plot goes, it's decent. I will say though that the missions still do feel largely similar to the side content. You still go and speak to NPCs, fight some enemies, retrieve an item and bring it back to an NPC to get a reward. There's not really a lot to distinguish which is which and they still all blend together. There's gotta be something, anything, that the developers can add to differentiate them. I mean, I can't remember a single mission in the main campaign that felt different to the side content or had a single memorable moment that made me <gasps> He lives! I clapped! I clapped when I saw it! Cat Quest 2 is leagues above the original game. The changes made to the gameplay make it feel faster, more varied, and incredibly satisfying all at the same time. The world, side content, and story have seen massive improvements, whilst also keeping what made the original a charmingly fun experience. Even with a few drawbacks, it does everything that a sequel should do. It improves, tinkers and perfects the formula as best as they can, and they definitely 100% succeeded. Cat Quest 2, without a shadow of a doubt, gets a recommend from me. It's a really great game, and has made me excited for the future of this series. With a third game on the way this year, I'm really excited to see where this franchise goes. If you enjoyed the first one, or just want a short, cute game with a ton of charm, this is definitely for you. Grab a friend, gear up, and set off on a fun-filled adventure. Whew, I made it through that entire video without saying a single cat pun. I'm so proud of myself, I can't believe that rehab worked. You know what, I think I deserve a round of applause. Oh for God's sake!